Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Guillaume for Tomans Guitars and Basses here at Guitar Summit 2023, and incredibly lucky to be with Bill Gallagher from Mastodon. Hello, how do you do? I'm very good. How are you, man? I'm a little tired. Just flew in, but I'm I'm good. I can't imagine you just uh, Mega Monsters was a few a week ago, a few no, weeks ago? about a month ago, almost now. Month. Yeah, yeah. And you start in South America in a month? Yeah, November. Well, it's November. Yeah, middle of November. So it's something like that. It still feels like <laughs> summer, so it's kind of weird to say like middle of November yeah. is in a month. <laughs> no, it's incredible, right? Time's flying. It's insane. Um, okay. I'm going to start with gear. I, I think I have five questions for you. Sure. <laughs> going to start with number one. Uh, what do you consider to be the most important part of your rig? Most important part? Well, I mean, they all are important. They all work together, obviously. Um, but you have to start with a comfortable guitar that you believe in mm. <laughs> and, and, and uh, is reliable, yeah. stays in tune, sounds good, plays good, you know. So I, I think over my almost 40 years of playing, I finally found that guitar, yeah. you know. So that's that's probably where you would start. It was a good, good guitar. Very logical. I respect yeah. that. Uh, a lot of people, like, obviously, your amp, your signature amp is long-standing now. It is very, it's like, I would have called you a creature of habit, but your guitar has been changing. Are you still experimenting with things like that, or are you pretty set now in your ways with uh, with your rig? I mean, I feel like I'm set with, like, my my rig and my sound, but I do experiment, yes. I'm always experimenting, you know. I'm a guy. Yeah. I just can't can't stop looking. Like, hey, what's that over there? Is that better than this? I don't know. All right, how many pedals a month, Let me, honestly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've been using Helix for a long time, so I'm kind of like, I do have a lot of pedals, mm. which, you know, when I'm in the studio, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of really good, uh, you know, pedal companies hooking me up and... Yeah. You know, I've got a, a lot a lot to choose from, and, and pedals are always fun. But, you know, my Helix, like, it kind of encapsulates all those pedals into one quick little unit, which I brought with me, you know, the, the HX Stomp. You know, everything is in there. It's incredible. So it's it's still, I'm still experimenting with that, you know what I mean? And uh, Axe FX, you know, same way. I, I used that for many years. Um, uh, and I think all those things... They they assist you in, in songwriting and, and recording and mixing and all that stuff. It's like, oh, I can add some of this in there. And for me, I would just turn the knob for the from the presets and you know, stuff that people had already made. I'm like, wow, that sounds cool. And it would inspire me to write a part. Like during Emperor of Sand, I wrote a lot of things, just turning the knob on the to a different setting and being like, wow, that sounds really cool. And I'll just play just play something. It sounds cool. Maybe it might be very simple or whatever, but it they're all tools. All these things you got to remember, um, and, I, and I think the bi the biggest. Uh, I mean, it also helps sell guitars, obviously. But when you're out there and, and kids want to sound like you, of course they're going to buy your stuff. But the only person who's going to sound like you is you. You could get Jimi Hendrix to play through a, a, a Gorilla amp with a broken speaker, and it's going to sound fucking awesome. I mean, you know, if he were alive today. But amen. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why don't I sound like you? Because I'm, you're not me. You know what I mean? And uh, but you can come close. So, but yeah, I am always experimenting, and because there's so much, there's so much stuff out there. I mean, look at this place. There's there's so much gear out there, and guys like us love to nerd out and, and try new things because you you want to keep up with the Joneses, as they say. Wise words. Wise words. <laughs> Have you ever considered? Ditching completely the like the amps and the any everything and go full digital for touring for practical purposes. And um, well, honestly, I've been trying to build the world's smallest fly rig, <laughs> like really small. Yeah. So I'm I'm down to. I mean, to answer your question, yes, I've been using Synergy, yeah. which I've really love sounds really really good it's really every every module they come out with is sound even better and better um and i and I, I mean i love my friedman it's awesome when i'm at home in the states that's mm. i use that i use a victory super crack and, and, and the sound of those two things together is, is nothing sounds that good but when i'm flying into like, like for instance south america we're touring there in november like i said and I'm bringing. I'm trying to bring as small, smallest rig as possible. You know, so it's easy to steal. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want. That's what you want. <laughs> no, um, but right now I've I've got like a Duchess pedal, a Victory Duchess oh, pedal, sick. and a Friedman. Uh, it's like a B E O D pedal, like this big, mm -hmm. and I'm just 
plugging those in direct uh, to like a Fryat power amp. Oh yeah. And using those as the actual amps. Well, they they act, they go into the uh, they're controlled uh, in like settings in the uh, in the Helix. Yeah. So basically, I'm switching between the two. One's a clean amp, mm -hmm. like a preamp, yeah. and the other is a dirty amp. And they sound. I mean, if you're not looking at it, you'd be like, that sounds like a real giant amp. Hundred percent. They like they're they're now making preamps in little tiny pedals that. And I'm like, man, this okay. So those are my <laughs> those are my amps, giant amps, shrunk down to these little pedals, and then inside the Helix, I've got all my effects. So, you know, that's that goes into a little lunchbox, and yeah. you're you're good to go. You know, that's great. I just want to show up one day with a little tiny, just open it up, I'm like here's my stuff. Man, that sounds huge. Okay, cool. But you can do that these days with, you know, you don't need a, a giant Marshall full stack and. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree. And I, I love how that experimentation also translates into uh, uh, that evolution that went through your sound in Mastodon. And like all the, there, there's a core thing. There's definitely a core thing. And I think your gain structure and the way you've been combining things to create something so huge, like sounding, but just like the effects, the, the, the parts that go in and out, the, the, it's, it's just, I don't know. To me, it shows that you're still, very much in that game of looking at like what's coming out and what's like how to do this or this or that. Absolutely. I was like, I like that. When we record records, you know, we're uh, in, and this was kind of taught to me. Uh, I think when we started working with like Brendan O'Brien, you know, we'd play one part and be like, okay, we'll double that, but don't you, okay, well, no, not use this guitar yeah. and use that amp. Oh, why? Oh, you'll see. You know, I'll play that. <laughs> So a lot of times my main weapons is like a, uh, like a humbuckered guitar, like say my, my Les Paul custom like 77 or whatever. Like I'll play, I'll play a rhythm part on that when I'm tracking. And then I'll grab my ESP Ron Wood signature Telecaster, yeah. which has a, you know, a single coil pickup. And I play the same part over that. And man, it, makes, it just makes it from this to like this. And it... The Telecaster just gives it that that mid range you're missing when you have a humbucker guitar. Yeah, you can't get the same sound, but when you mix the two in a recording, now you've got both ends of the spectrum. And uh, you know, also say it's uh, you know we've got part A, part B, part C. Well, hey, in part A, use a completely different sound, completely different guitars, and then just keep mixing it up. So every time the the song moves and changes the dynamics really stick out. And yeah. I've just found that uh, I love experimenting with all that kind of stuff. You know, I own a studio back in Atlanta and I, I have a home studio that, you know, that that's where the experimentation, I get to sit down there for hours. My wife's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you, you been down there for three days? Uh, oh, I'm working on this riff. It's really cool. <laughs> you've been on tour for a month. I haven't seen yeah. you. And now you've been buried down there for three days. <laughs> yeah, she's like, don't you do that on the road? I'm like, it's, honey, it's different. It's so different. Yeah. You don't get it. No. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Hey, I don't want to take too much of your time. You're a very busy man. But uh, I want to end up on something less geeky, maybe. Um, if you had one piece of advice for a beginner guitar player, beginner musician. It can be gear-related. It can be very metaphysical. Just go wherever you want with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, play every day. Practice as much as you can. And just... Uh, just don't get sidetracked, like trying to be somebody else. You know, for me, I, uh, for the longest time, I wanted to be all the guitar heroes I looked up to, you know, and it's all, uh, it's all attainable. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. when I was a kid, I was just so intimidated by, by these guys on stage. I was like, oh my God, these guys are rock stars and they're, they're touring. And they I just thought everyone was born like that. Like you had to be like you're born born into royalty, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like Led Zeppelin, and that's the way they want you. They want it to look that way. That's why they put you on the stage and they put you in the big tour bus and all stuff. But man, I learned. I, I'm just a, a, a nobody kid from uh, Western New York. You know, a little tiny town population, like a couple thousand people, and it was. I feel that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of hard work. It's not a weekend type of gig. You yeah. know, if you really want to be a musician and artist, just record everything that you that you write, even if it's, you don't think it's that great, just just record everything because you might go back to it someday. And that's one thing I wish I had done more. Yeah, I never had, you know, you have cell phones, 
when I was growing up. So uh, just to be able to record all those ideas when they're fresh in your head, and it's it's a lot. A lot of it's about spontaneity. I don't read music. I never took any guitar lessons. I just I play and I play and play and play until something gives me goosebumps, and I feel like oh, this is really cool. And then I record it, and I I stuff it away, and I just keep playing and, until the next time I get that feeling and yeah. then pretty soon I've got a song and uh, you know I show it to the other guys and then we got a record so. look for the goosebumps wise words yeah. <laughs> wise words from Bill Kelly huh? <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. thank you so very much for taking the time uh, have a great show have a great Mega Monsters South America tour and I'm looking forward to catching you live soon excellent sounds good thank you thank you guys for watching hope that was enjoyable entertaining uh all of the above. Uh, have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.